Okay, I can officially count on my hand how many days to go until Prince Caspian comes out. There's ten days to go. And uh, it's kind of sad, obviously, because I started this blog uh, just over a year ago. I meant to do a video for my anniversary, but I forgot so much going on. But I started this over a year ago, and there were 392 days to go when I started. And now here we go, uh, j just 10 to go. And um, tomorrow it'll be single digits until the movie's out. And it's uh, so obviously very exciting and kind of sad at the same time that we've come this far, and it's, and, uh, it, it's, it's all going to end soon. But then, of course, once the movie's out, well... Then there's all kinds of other speculation and reviews and stuff to get, to do, and uh, so that'll that'll be kind of the beginning of a whole new thing. But um, I wanted to do. I've kind of been meaning to do this for a while. I feel like you know one of the goals I had when I started with this was to, to was to be a detective uh, for some of it, and uh, to take this to this bit of information, this bit, and put it together and say, oh, well, I think they do this. I think this is what the movie's going to be. And I haven't had much of a chance to do that as much as I would like, to be to be the detective and really figure out what they've done. Now, obviously, I speculate a lot, but I really want to, as far as actually piecing it together. So I'm going to dedicate a whole movie here, a whole video, to trying to piece the movie together. Uh, not totally, but some of the big bits, at least. Um, Line of the Witch and the Wardrobe, remember, we had, we had a really... Because the war is well, more of a linear story, they, they didn't have the multiple storyline thing that this one's going to have. So we had a pretty good idea of what, um, basically, what was going to happen. And uh, I remember for the battle part, we were kind of fuzzy, like how was Lucy and Aslan and Susan's bit going to intercut with the battle? How, what are we going to see of Peter and Edmund before the battle starts? Because the book doesn't show any of that, so it really wasn't clear. And do Peter and Edmund know Aslan is dead? You know, in the movie, there were a lot of questions we had about that. But um, so I want to do a video just trying to piece it all together as much as possible. One thing, this has been an issue. I, I don't think I've really had a chance to talk about this hardly at all. But it's actually been something that's been on my mind a lot, and so I better hurry up and get it on film here before the movie comes out. Uh, why the Pevensies decide to follow Trumpkin in the movie? In the book, they do it because he tells them a story that goes on for about four chapters, and it makes so much sense. Like, the, his story just lines up with theirs so much. They figure out, oh, that's why we were called, because of the horn. It, this Prince Caspian guy, that's why the horn's missing. Oh, that's the time we got here. It just lines up so perfectly. And um, it explains everything about that Peter had already guessed about why he cared parables and ruins and everything. And so they decide to follow him. In the movie, but what does Trumpkin really know in the movie? Like, we know that, you know, the opening scene is Caspian getting captured, and uh, he gets knocked out, and, uh, or just right after he blows the horn. And um, then Trumpkin apparently gets captured right here. Now, I, I, I heard that a long time ago, and that's a rumor I think I've believed all along, that uh, Trumpkin gets captured uh, right when um, Caspian. Um, that they blow the horn right there because he's being pursued, then Trumpkin gets captured. And uh, apparently in the movie, taken to some sort of trial before Miraz, and then, you know, taken to Caraparville to be executed, the, Pe the Pevensies rescue him. Now think about it. Look at it from Trumpkin's point of view in the movie. What does he really know? He's seen this, you know, this kid with black hair and a weird accent, and uh, he doesn't really know, like he doesn't know it's Caspian. Like maybe he caught a glimpse of the horn and heard that, so you might be able to tell the Pevensies, oh, I, I heard this weird noise and this horn of a lion, and, like, that could be it. But in the clip we've recently seen, uh, when Peter meets Caspian, he says, Prince Caspian, you know? And, like, well, who told him that Prince Caspian was leading? In the movie, Trumpkin didn't know, did he? Or at least that's the impression I'm getting. So that, that's something I don't understand. I, obviously, there must be an explanation for it, but that's just something we don't have enough clues on yet. So that'll be something I probably won't know until I see the movie, or read a spoilerish review, I don't know. So that's one big thing, uh, that altering the timeline, like the chronology, is I'd really like to see explained. I remember having this conversation, like, two years ago, about oh, how are they going to do this whole Trumpkin thing, and now I'm finally getting the chance to discuss it on, discuss it on these videos. Um, I don't really have a good sense of how the movie f fits together, like all these bits of information and all these shots we've seen. Like, um, how exactly it intercuts. I was trying to put it together in my mind. We know it starts with Caspian fleeing, you know, Miraz's son being born, and Caspian fleeing the castle. And uh, then he gets, I um, mean, you know, are they going to include the stuff with them on the tower, you know, in the book and, you know, kind of go into his longing for the old days? How much of that are they going to go into? It looks like it's been cut out, but, you know, that's another question I have. But so, start to the mirror as Sun being born, Caspian flees the castle. Uh, he's pursued by Telmarines. He gets caught. Uh, he picks that moment to blow the horn and the, you know, uh, the Trumpkin, Truffle Hunter, Nickabrick uh, rescue him, I guess. And they, uh, Nickabrick knocks him out. Uh, but then it, it, it somehow it transitions to the Pevensies, and uh, the Pevensies, blah, 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 Peter just doesn't feel important anymore, they're in this fight, they get called to Narnia, uh, they find the treasure chamber, they rescue Trumpkin, 
And uh, at some point, maybe shortly after they get called to Narnia, it'll cut back to Caspian. And um, it'll cut back to Caspian, like, waking up or something. And then somewhere it's also got to cut to Miraz. That's the really fuzzy part for me, is I have no, I don't have a clue where Miraz and stuff fits into this. I mean, we know that it shows him being crowned. Apparently he gets crowned after his son is born, which is certainly a change from the book. Uh, we get to actually see him become king in the movie. And uh, we know that he has you know, a little conversation with Pruna Prismia. Uh, we believe from an IMDb review, and and, and uh, this is one of the things that I was uh, sworn to secrecy on, and now I guess since it's been posted on IMDb, it's okay, um, but that uh, Miraz spreads this lie that Caspian has been kidnapped, and that's how he justifies sending his army out, I suppose. But um, I, I have no idea where they're going to fit all, all that in. Like, uh, if it's just Caspian storyline and the Pevensey storyline, yeah, I can see where maybe after they get to Narnia, they run around for a while, then it cuts back to Caspian waking up, you know, and meeting them. Then it cuts back to them finding the treasure chamber. Then it cuts back to Caspian, you know, going um, journeying to the Nanting Lawn and meeting Reaper Jeep and all that. But um, where Miraz fits into this, I really have no idea. I have no clue where they can put him. And so that's some, another reason I would be very curious to see what they do with that. Um, the journey to Aslan Tau, um, the Pevensey's. Uh, how long is it? Uh, what does it intercut with? Does it intercut with? Is there? Does Caspian fight another battle before he meets? I mean, like a real battle, not just like a skirmish, like when he meets Reaper Chief, but a real battle. Like, um, it seems to me necessary that you know have it like it is in the book, where um, Caspian is a desperate need of the Pevensey's help. Like he's at the end of his rope, and the Pevensey's show up kind of just in you know, in the book, just in time, and. Um, I, so it seems like they really need to have that. Like if they haven't really fought anything, if we're not really in a desperate situation, um, it doesn't. The Pevensey's arrival doesn't mean as much. And um, so, um, we, but we haven't heard anything about any other battle like that. So I would think probably not. But we'll have to see. But how long is their journey? Uh, what does it intercut with and stuff? Uh, where exactly does the bear scene take place? It seems to take place uh, before they leave. I would say not during their journey. It's right before they start their journey. And so I don't really get. How, where that fits in. There's a few shots I don't see a place for, like um, that, that that awkward, what looks like an awkward moment between Caspian and Susan, where um, you know he's holding the crossbow and she like kind of gives him some few, few pointers. I guess uh, I think they've taken the the shooting match between Trumpkin and uh, Susan, and given it to Susan and Caspian. But um, there, I don't see a place for that shot. Where exactly does that fit in? Some point after they meet, you know, I don't really get it. And then there's that uh, Susan kind of, you know, getting ambushed by all those Telmarines and pulling out her bow. Where does that fit in? Uh, when does Caspian rescue Susan? Um, I kind of have a vague idea from storybooks, but I don't get, like, how does it all fit together? And where does Miraz and Printer Prismian, the baby figure, into all this? We know they've given them uh, uh, bigger roles. Uh, where does the whole thing with uh, Glazelle Gl and Sepespian? They've established, I, I think they're going to have more of a, a subplot with them leading up to where they betray him, unlike in the book where we meet them at the very end. They're going to actually have a subplot through the whole movie that ends with them betraying him. And um, where on earth does that fit? I mean, this is really a heavy movie. There's a lot going on in this movie. Like, where, where, where are they going to fit all that in? We know if Fantasia Kate, it's going to be two hours and 17 minutes, which is a little bit longer than Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It sounds like this movie is going to be pretty jam-packed. Um, but I don't really see a place for any of that. And uh, so there's all kinds of things. And then what af after the night raid, um, Peter... Uh, says something to the effect of, Lucy, you got to go find, find Aslan. We don't, we're fuzzy on the details, though, so I don't really, like, what exactly does he tell her? And then the end, of course. Um, how does the, you know, Lucy and Aslan bits intercut with the battle? Now, I'm really concerned because in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe movie, they basically took Chapter 16 and threw it in the garbage with Aslan restoring the statue. There was almost nothing. And I think that if they just had given that scene more of a sense of urgency, they still could have kept it in the movie, and it would have been visually interesting and a fantastic scene and important scene from the book. But they, they, they cut almost all of it out. And I'm really afraid they're going to cut out all the bits with uh, Aslan running through uh, Narnia and, you know, like turning that one guy into a tree. It's kind of bizarre, but thematic, and they might have to adapt it somewhat for screen. But the idea of it, of Aslan going through and setting everything right again, is so thematically important to the idea of the return of the old days. And I'm really afraid they're going to do what they did in Line the Witch and the Wardrobe and completely cut all of that stuff out, uh, which I would not like at all. So that's a big concern. So I don't really get how that all fits in. But, you know, it's it, these are things that there, there, there are explanations for. We're just not going to see it for another um, 10 days or so. Then after that, of course, we get to analyze, well, how, how, how did it all do? Did it all flow really well? Was it a good movie, a good adaptation? So we'll find out. 10 days.